Hello, welcome to a brand new episode of the Comic Call. I'm your host, Dylan Lang. Uh, it's my third Comic Call in a row since I wasn't able to do my uh, Dylan No show um, for Easter, but I hopefully will get one out tomorrow. I'm thinking now because I think my daughter wants to watch Doctor Strange. She's only three movies away from seeing all the MCU movies and getting ready for Infinity War coming at the end of the month. But we're not here to talk about that kind of stuff. That's stuff we talk about on my other show, Dylan Knows. Uh, instead, we're going to talk about our Comic Call this week. Is this right here. This is the first week of April. It should be spring, but it didn't feel like it out there. Uh, so let's get started. Springtime usually brings about weddings and stuff like that. Well, the beginning of Batman and Catwoman's wedding is starting now. Um, this is a awesome series right now, and I love the idea of Batman and Catwoman getting married. Uh, it's two. It's a two for cover. Uh, this one, there's one with uh, Bruce looking in the mirror, and he sees Batman in his tuxedo. Uh, this one's written by... Um, Tom King, <clears throat> with art by uh, Joel Jones and Mikkel uh, Janin. I got to find all these all the names here because I know that they, they all. There's Joel Jones did one part and Mikkel Janin did another. Uh, where is the cast list? It doesn't see. Gotta be here somewhere. Uh, I don't know. I don't see it anywhere. Oh, there, there it is. Tom King, uh, Mikkel Jan, and Joel Jones. Yep, so. Uh, but yes, yeah, so you get a little bit of both. You get a little bit of story of Batman and Catwoman's uh, first appearances with each other as Catwoman is contemplating doing some stuff. Um... It's a pretty interesting uh, take on things. You get a nice artwork from both Joel and from uh, Mikael. And uh, it looks like a really uh, good story set to set up the whole wedding storyline. The wedding won't actually take place until uh, issue 50. So we've got six issues to go. But supposedly this is the start of the setup. So Batman is definitely one you need to check out. I highly recommend it entirely. The whole run that Tom King has done so far has been fantastic, and I recommend you check it out in trade format if you can't get it in comics. Or if you bought the comics and you haven't gotten to the um, read them yet, stop everything and read them. Another good series that's wrapping up because uh, Brian Michael Bendis is going to take it over soon is Superman. Uh, Superman number 44 uh, is finishing up the uh, Patrick Gleason, Peter Tomazzi, uh era of Superman, which has been a phenomenal era. We also get uh, artwork by Doug Monkey and Jaime Mendoza. Um, and it finishes up their Bizarro World storyline. And the interesting thing about Doug Monkey is his artwork and Patrick Gleason's is very similar. So when Doug Monkey came in to cover for Patrick Gleason, who's co-writing the series, you never really notice anything different. I mean, you could tell the differences, but a lot of the time it was very, uh, very close. Uh, but this is uh, yep, continuing the Bizarro storyline. Uh, next up, we also have Green Lanterns, number 44. Um, I think it gives a new story arc. Uh, it's written by um, Tim Seeley, uh, with art by uh, Ronan Clique. And uh, it looks like we're going to focus more on um, Jessica. And... Uh, so, new storyline. May as well pick it up because it's been a good series so far. Um, and he's obviously, and I love this cover also. I'm just to get a better shot of the cover. It's really, really an excellent cover. So, um, some good stuff. <clears throat> Next up, we have Harley Quinn number 41. Um, it's in the cover I wanted. I wanted to get this. Well, Amanda's cover isn't too bad, but uh, Frank Cho has an interconnecting cover with this, this whole story arc. Uh, it's a brand new one uh, written by Frank Thierry uh, with art by uh, Inaki Miranda and Moritat. So you get a little bit of both. Moritat came on and did it a little bit um, during um, Palmiati and Connor's run. Uh, so have him popping up back in again is, is really, really good. So, actually, this is the ending storyline, I bet, but the, the Cho covers had the interconnecting covers that were really, really cool looking. So, we'll see. Um, Metal ended last week, so we're continuing the new series out of Metal. This one is called The Curse of Brimstone. It's a brand new series written by Justin Jordan with art by Philip Tan. 
Um, from what I heard, I haven't read it yet. From what I heard, it's unlike any comic book you've read, so that might be just worth a shot to pick it up. I don't think you... I've read the other ones, and I don't think you really need to have known what was going on in Metal to understand these books, like Silencer and Damage and the, uh, the Terrifics and Sideways. They've all sort of not really had a connection to Metal, unless it's cursory. Um, and then you get a preview of The Challengers, which was Scott Snyder and Andy Kubert, a uh, new book coming in May. This is the book that um, Scott Snyder's been wanting to write since he started working at DC, and now he's finally gotten the chance to. Next up, we have Deathstroke number 30, which begins the six-part Deathstroke versus Batman story that's only going to be in Deathstroke, I believe. Uh, great Lee Weeks cover, though. He's not doing the interior artwork. Um, it's written by Christopher Priest. Um, I wish it was easier to find the creative team's full names instead of just their last names. I mean, the last names are on the cover. Here we go. Uh, Christopher Priest, Carlo Paglion, and Jason Paz doing the artwork. Um, so Car Carlo Paglion has been doing the art for um, Deathstroke for a good portion of uh, Christopher Priest's run on it. So um, a Deathstroke Batman uh, knockdown fight in Best stroke is coming up in that one. Uh, this has been a, and I keep mentioning this every time I, I, I it comes up, but I, I have to keep doing the Mia Culpa. Um, White Knight, Batman White Knight number seven is out this week, and I originally was going to write this series off, but I got the first issue and I leafed through it and it looked really, really nice. And um, I'd read some other stuff about it, so I did some more research in it. And then after like the first couple issues came out, I sat down and read them all in a row, and I loved them. So I've been catching up on this one. Batman White Knight's excellent. I'm not the biggest Joker fan in the world, but this story is what if the Joker was normal and um, took over Gotham uh, properly. Uh, Sean Murphy did the story and artwork, and it's been phenomenal. This is a great Batman story. Uh, it belongs up there with Batman Year One and um, and Dark Knight. I that's just my opinion, and I, I highly recommend it. It's it's a, been a fantastic story and beautiful artwork. And Sean Murphy's trying to get an a R rated version of it done when it comes out in trade, which I think would be phenomenal. So a little bit more violence and a bit more sex and nudity because there was sex and nudity in there. So, but it was covered for the comics code, I guess. Uh, we come to an end to a Black Lightning miniseries, so if you've been enjoying the uh, TV show, uh, pick up the six issues. The final uh, issue is finally out, written by Black Lightning's creator, Tony Isabella. Um, so, if you've been, if you're a fan, Clayton Henry's doing the artwork with Evil Goucher is also helping him out. If you uh, like the TV show, uh, it's definitely uh, worth a pickup. Uh, all six issues should be out at your local comic book store, so you can pick them up and read them one time, or the trade will be out, I'm assuming, in a couple months, if you want to wait till then, but um, Black Lightning number one, or number six, rather, is the end of that miniseries. That's it for the regular DC stuff. From Vertigo, we have Astro City 51, which I, I don't know if I reported this or not, but this is one of my favorite comic books of all time, and I highly recommend if you ever go see any of the trades a dark cover. I'll get you a little bit closer there. If you get any of the trades, um, if you're, or you're interested in starting in comics, Astro City is the place to start. Uh, but this is going to be ending. The comics going to be ending really soon, and they're only going to do original graphic novels after that. So it's a little bit more disappointing, but we'll see. Uh, this one is actually written by uh, Kurt Busiek. Well, Kurt Busiek has written everything, but Brett Anderson is the guy who's drawn in the old days most every one of... Um, the issues, but he had trouble catching up on his deadlines, so they had gotten a number of people to fill in for him, so this came out in a monthly manner, which it did, um, but they got some people to fill in for him. Uh, Astro City is such a great series, and uh, I'm sorry to see it go in comic format, but I can understand you can tell bigger stories in an original graphic novel format and um, not have to worry about it. You can tell one big story here and then another big story down the line. Instead of trying to come up with sequential stories at the same time. Uh, two Hanna-Barbera books. Uh, first up, we have the reboot of the Jetsons. Final issue of that. Issue number six is here. Written by uh, Jimmy Palmiotti. Uh, with art by uh, Pierre Bart Baito. This, um, the Jetsons, was more like the Fantastic Four. The way uh, it was written uh, by Jimmy Palmiotti and updated. Um, and it's... Uh, 
continues that in the aspect right now. So uh, pretty interesting take on the Jetsons. Uh, I would recommend it. It was it was a good first couple of issues. I haven't caught up on it since. The other one is Snagglepuss Exit Stage Life Left. Snagglepuss Chronicles number four is out this week. Um, this is such a great uh, story idea. It, it, it pictures Snagglepuss as a gay Southern playwright in the 1950s. Um, and uh, it's the guy who wrote it. Uh, I'm trying to remember what his name is. Uh, i got to find the uh, creative. You see, this is why I wish they would just do it easily instead of like halfway through the book. Uh, Mark Russell wrote uh, the updated version of the Flintstones, which was a 12 issue social fantastic series art by Mike Feehan and Sean Parsons. So uh, Snagglepuss uh, as a gay 50s uh, Southern playwright is, is such a fantastic idea and it's handled really, really well. And you also get to see um, Huckleberry Hound and uh, other gayness happening which is really really cool so um pretty interesting there um you also get a uh backup uh sasquatch detective created written by brandy stillwell with art by gus vasquez uh that i guess is just not really i've never heard of that character before so i guess it's just an original character that they needed to fill the spot here but sasquatch detective is a uh, interesting uh name for a book that's it for the DC stuff. Marvel, Marvel, they've been going absolutely crazy with this. Amazing Spider-Man number 798 is the final story arc of Dan Slott's 10-year career writing Amazing Spider-Man. <clears throat> My comic store put a limit on one per customer. Uh, you could get by one at regular price, but if you want more, you have to pay extra. I guess they're expecting them to be collector's items. I mean, it's a great Alex Ross cover here. And uh, Dan Slott's the writer, Stuart Emmerman, penciler, Wade Van Graaff. Raw Badger is the anchor, um, and it's like the last Green Lantern story, or Green Air, um, Green Goblin story, and it's actually an interesting idea what they've got Green uh, Arrow doing, uh, Green Goblin doing, excuse me. Um, and uh, I don't want to spoil it, but uh, I'll spoil it. Um, Norman Osborn has grabbed a hold of the Carnage uh, symbiote and has had it connect with him. So Norman Osborn in control of Carnage, a little bit of a scary thing. So issue 800 is going to end the storyline um, between these two, and then 801 is going to be um, uh, slots like farewell issue. So uh, good artwork also by Stuart M. Uh, they announced a new Fantastic Four comic written by Dan Slott coming out this summer, so who knows what's going to happen with Marvel 2 and 1, but this is the thing in the Human Torch, written by Chip Zdarsky. Now, the thing that annoys me about this is that I love um, uh, Jim Chung's artwork, and he was the original artist on this, but then Valerio Shidi took over after only two issues because Chung either has a hard time uh, making comics on time, as it were, and also... Um, He's going to be joining. Uh, I don't think it's Fantastic Four. He's going to be joining someone on DC. The new, a new, the new Justice League book is what he, Jim Chung, is going to be joined with, with uh, Jorge Jimenez. Uh, that one's written by Scott Snyder. So I don't know. I still think you know, if you want to get people into a book using a, a artist name like a Jim Chung, and he only draws like two issues and then is gone for like ten issues, it's not good because I've experienced that particularly with Marvel. Uh, Mark Bagley was was announced to be the artist on Peter David's uh, Scarlet Spider book. He was the artist for maybe two or three issues and was done, which is funny because Mark Bagley is one of those guys that can draw. I mean, he drew Ultimate Spider-Man almost 100-plus issues and was always on time, sometimes double issues uh, per year or per month. So I don't understand that. And then the other one was um, Ivan Reyes was supposed to be the artist for JLA, and he did the first issue and like issue 24 or something like that, maybe a story 24, 23, 24 or something like that. And then that was it. So not that there's anything wrong with fill-ins, but I mean, if you're going to push a specific artist on a comic, you should really sort of keep them on there for a while. So Marvel 2 one, I mean, Chip Zdarsky still a good writer, but I don't know how much longer I'm going to be collecting that, particularly with Fantastic Four coming out uh, from Independence. IW number one has um, Demigod. Um, part of their ominous press group. 
It's written by Ron Mars with art by Andy Smith. Um, and Andy Smith has got a real Bart Sears vibe to him. But it's, it's sort of like a Shazam story for the most part. Uh, I think it's like the power of Hercules or something like that is put into the body of a mortal. Uh, the mortal's like a nerdy type of guy. And uh, he becomes a stud and stuff like that. So, um, but I mean, it's, it should be interesting. Um, take a look at that. So we'll see. I like Ron Mars and Andy Smith is a, is a good Bart Sears clone. I like Bart Sears' style artwork. So uh, from uh, Aftershock Press, we had Betrothed number two. Um, interesting story idea. Uh, these two kids hate each other on Earth, but in, they don't know this, but they just r realized it that uh, they're actually a, a prince and princess from different families who are betrothed to each other. Uh, it's written, written by Sean Lewis with art by Steve Huey. Um, so two of them hate each other, but uh, they discover their true heritage as being uh, kings, a prince and princess that will soon be kings and queens of some alien people, and they are supposed to be betrothed to each other to end war or something like that. So it's an interesting take on stuff. Aftershock's been doing some good stuff. Uh, continuing in the I get it because I like the good girl artwork, sexy artwork, we get Deja Tharis, number three. Um, written by Amy Chu with art by Pasquale Qualano. Uh, this is like a uh, prequel to uh, John Carter of Mars and details the rise of the characters before John Carter showed up. So you get a cool Mars vibe sort of thing to it, which is cool in and of itself, but the main reason people are buying this, obviously, is because of the the sexy um, Deja Thoris costumes and uh, stuff like that. So good stuff. It's actually a pretty good story, so it's not just because of this sexiness. Backways number four, also from Aftershock, is a combination of like... Um, Supernatural and Day of the Dead stuff. It's written by Justin Jordan with art by Eleonora Carlini. Um, kind of got a manga feel to it, but it's a uh, it's a fun little book. Uh, supernatural books are always tops on my list. I, I love them a lot, so uh, I'm good on that. And as again, I keep saying, Aftershock keeps doing really really good books, so can't go wrong with them. From Image, we have Elsewhere number six. Uh, this is the story where Amelia Earhart and D.B. Cooper, they disappeared, but they actually went to another dimension, and this is them trying to work together and escape. Jay Farber's a writer. Sumoye Kesgen is the artist. So you've got Amelia Earhart interacting with D.B. Cooper, who are the only two Earthlings on this bizarre alien planet. So you get a little bit of a fantasy sci-fi feel to it, but a little bit of a historical um, aspect as well and it's an interesting take when your lead characters are two of the most um, interesting true crime cases well, not really true crime in the case of Amelia Earhart she's a missing person case and D.B. Cooper was a true crime case but it's fun to see them together also in Good Girl Artwork and also by Amy Chu we have Red Sonia number 14 it appears that Red Sonia is no longer on modern day Earth so I haven't read and I haven't gotten caught up yet but it's written by um Amy Chu and Eric Burnham with art by Carlos Gomez. So she's back in her chainmail bikini and uh, looks like a fantasy type of place and not Earth. So I should probably get caught up with uh, the story to see what's going on, how she got back to um, um, where she's from. So that and finally we have Sex Criminals by Matt Fraction and the aforementioned Chip Zdarsky who's not only a writer he's also an artist this one is of course for mature readers duh um, this is issue number 23 um, let me see if there's any issue any, there's just some artwork with that doesn't have sex in it but there's you know it's not all about sex and stuff like that but uh, the basic premise is when you climax during sex there are certain people who can um you know, can wander around um, and do stuff and no one knows that they're there and uh, then they come back so interesting book so that's it for this week um, <laughs> you have to be three Batman's hide to get this <laughs> ride kid that's funny um, that's it for this week's books uh, I'm trying to get back on a 
Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday schedule for my haul, but just life is stepping in the way. Um, so hopefully you don't mind seeing on Saturday. These books came out this week, came out on Wednesday. Your comic book stores are probably still going to be open now for a little, few more hours. Mine's open until about 7 on Saturdays, and then it's only open from 12 to 5 on Sunday, but still it's open on Sunday. Your book store, comic book store might be as well. If you haven't gotten your books yet, that's some of the stuff you can look at to buy. Uh, I would recommend highly most of the stuff, but Batman 44 particularly is um, tops of my list. Or if you're a new reader, uh, Curse of Brimstone number one would be a good one also, or I'll pick up some of the trades, stuff like that. So one my last uh, PSA announcement. Uh, if you do not know where your local comic book store is, because the whole point of doing this show is to get people to go to your, local, to your comic book store and go into it and get into comics and read comics and have as much fun with it as I am. Um, if you don't know where your local comic book store is, uh, go to your search engine, type in Comic Shop Locator Service, and when the search comes up, you click on the probably the top one, and it'll take you to the Comic Shop Locator Service or CSLS website, and all you got to do is on the side, there'll be a place to put your zip code. You write your zip code, and it'll give you all the comic book stores within about a 20-mile radius of your location. And uh, it'll also give you um, websites, so you can get their hours. Usually what they'll do is when one pops up, if you click on it, it'll give you the general stuff, the hours, um, how many minutes away it is from your house, you know, uh, where it's located, stuff like that. And then you probably can do a, a click directions type of thing, or you can go to their website. There's a button for their website as well on there. Um, so definitely check it out. Definitely get into comics. As you saw, there's all kinds of different comics out there and it's not just superheroes anymore. So, um, you know, go into comic book store, discover out there. This isn't even all the comic books that came out this week. I, these are the only ones that I buy and I collect. There are a whole bunch of other ones I don't. Uh, I've been, Cutting my thing, the new JLA Justice League came out this week. I cut that out. Wonder Woman came out this week. I've been cutting that out also. Bombshells come out because I missed an issue and now I, I can't get caught up anymore. So I'm cutting that out. So, you know, it's a good place just to go and see what we got and see if you need to get caught up also. There's also a good place to get caught up. So if there's like an issue three of something that looks good to you that just came out, um, a lot of your comic book stores will have a shelf of like the last three to four months worth of stuff before it goes into the back issue bins that you can still get at regular cover price. There might only be one or two copies left, but it's still one or two copies left. So you can get all of them, uh, one, two, and three at the same time without having to pay that extra amount for the back order. So, or, um, back stock, uh, back issues, I should say. All right, enough backing out of that. I'm going to back out of this issue of, of this episode of Dill Knows. I think, and I tell the comic called Dill Knows, my other show, which I'm trying to get probably on a Sunday afternoon because my daughter wants to watch Doctor Strange. I'll probably watch that tonight, um, and it'll be too late for me to do my show tonight. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, I'm aiming for tomorrow afternoon. Uh, we don't have anything going on, so uh, we'll see you then. Uh, thanks. Read comics. Go to your old comic book store. Check out stuff. Bye.